Peter McQuire from Exxon Australia. Peter, I'll come to you directly because we've seen quite a choppy moves continuing in case of crude oil prices. But uh, to the bulls' surprise, uh, rather to the uh, you know the, on the side of the bulls, we've seen prices come back to seventy-five dollars per barrel as well. How do you see the current prices first of all, and the kind of statements that we've seen from IEA suggesting that the crude demand is here to stay? They've actually said that six percent of our demand is what we can expect per annum basis till two thousand twenty-eight. Well, good afternoon, Manishi. I mean, they're very strong forecasts, and I think that probably we saw the bottom of that market. I think it was oversold in some ways, and it really got spanked down to 68 and about 72, 50, 73 for Brent. But it's bounced, and it's bounced nicely, and we're mindful as far as what's going on this week, as far as rate rises, what uh, central bankers are doing, and the overall forecast as far as, uh, yeah, very solid growth certainly for this year, the rest of the year, and certainly for 24. So, yeah, I think um, maybe we've seen the bottom market. Mm. Peter, also, how are you looking at uh, the overall supply as a situation? Because there are various reports coming in from Nigeria. We've seen production and exports continue to grow from Algeria and uh, UAE, Russia, for that matter, as well. Well, exactly right. I mean, you know, you're conscious as far as who's adding to... Uh, uh, to solve everyone's problem in the sense of putting, you know, oil into barrels. So, yeah, I'm seeing those sort of numbers coming through, as you mentioned, the Nigerias, the Algerias. Uh, you know, the big the big swing in there is certainly um, what's going on with Saudis, and they want to see oil prices a lot higher than where it is at the moment. And the UAE was certainly the beneficiaries out of that OPEC um, situation two weekends ago. Like, you know, 10, 20, 15 days ago, anyway, the uh, the situation there, they get an extra 200,000 barrels a day as far as production. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, Northern Hemisphere summer, how it plays out, Manisha. Oh, yes. The other two important things to watch is uh, the dollar index, which is trading at below 103. The other is the China yeah. near-term, medium-term rate cuts that we saw, an expectation that you could be looking at a bigger bang move coming in from China, even now, maybe the next week itself. So dollar index on one side and China moves on the other side, which do you think is impacting markets more right now? Well, I'm conscious as far as US dollar, it's really come under a very solid move to the downside. It's nearly through that 102 handle, at about 102.15 at the moment, 102.20. And I wouldn't be surprised for it to, you know, be under 102 by sometime mid next week. There's the first part of it. As far as China's concerned, yeah, they'll do whatever they need to do to get results. And I think that they will stimulate and keep the uh, keep the wheels turning. It's been a slow takeoff. I thought they come out of the blocks very fast. Come, you know, the end of February, start of March, everyone was expecting, you know, big boom time from China, but it certainly pulled back a little bit from a manufacturing side. So I think they've got the getting a second win, Manisha, and uh, they're looking at the finish line and they want to finish with a, you know, wet sail. Peter, before I move on to metals, one final question on crude. And what's your sense on the prices now? Because Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, uh, JP Morgan report also now suggest prices to average anywhere between 80 to 85 dollars a barrel. I mean, all these banks and brokerages did talk about 90 and 95 and 100 as well. But with them revising it downside, what is your own sense on where are the prices now going to be in the second half? Well, it's pretty hard to argue against them. And I've got geopolitical concerns. You've got weather outages traditionally in August as far as hurricanes. You've got the other side as far as refineries. What's going on with the Taiwan situation and China? Um, ongoing issues that doesn't seem to be put to bed anywhere, anywhere close to being finished as far as Ukraine and Russia. So, Manisha, there's a lot of um, ingredients in the melting pot at the moment. And, yeah, I think it's going to be higher, you know, that 80 to $90 dollar bracket is very achievable and i think you've just got to draw that line in the sand and that's where it's going to run all right with crude done uh, what's your sense on metals now because we've seen prices here uh seen uh, see a bit of a gain would you say that a bottom is made right now with the dollar index inching down with china st starting to do things now individual fundamentals in any case on the positive side well exactly right i mean you have a look at copper it's back at 8500 a metric ton so it's had a nice move to the upside from those 78 handle so it's up the best part of 9%. I was looking at some numbers earlier. So it's been a very solid move over the last week and a bit. And I think that that will bring up, um, you know, iron ore pricing. The, the appetite is huge in China. We're exporting at record numbers out of Northwest Australia. So there's no shortage as far as, you know, an appetite from China. So 
yeah, maybe you're going to see a rally on zinc, maybe a little bit of a push up on aluminium. Uh, it's it's an interesting time, Anisha. That's all I'll say. It's very interesting. There's so many different components to this whole, um, yeah, the, the whole cake we call commodities and certainly equities. Mm.